Thanks a lot. So we cross advertise our events here third. Come to US, come to Europe, come to US. So. Okay, um, our next talk is um, from Michael Gelder. I hope I pronounced this right. He from Arm Micro. And uh, Michael um, will us, uh, introduce Arm Micro's uh, visual system design. Please. <laughs> there you go. Okay, I, I hope you can hear me. Great. All right. So um, I guess I'm not on the title slide. When we talk about Risk V, Risk V is all about options. Even the ISA itself is full of options. But of course, as we go to implementation, software, you know, stacks, it's, it's just lots and lots of stuff that you have to choose from. And some people will say, oh my god, so much choice. It's, it's fragmentation. It's bad for you. We don't believe that. We think that uh, if you look at the landscape of machine learning, of cloud, uh, this kind of diversity that we've seen in, in the open source domain for, for those domains has worked very, very well. And RISC-V in the hardware space is doing the same thing. It's bringing you the ability to choose. It's bringing you the capability to pick and match things, even if Many people are kind of effectively redoing the work of other people. This is expected. This is normal. And we've seen even today in presentations, you know, people work with different topics and sometimes they have similar work. But this work actually helps reinforce one another and, and make RISC-V a better ecosystem. Still, RISC-V is an ecosystem that needs some navigation. It needs the capability to see, you know, what's good, what's tested, what can be actually used in practice versus what's still to be developed and uh, too new to introduce into the market. And we've been doing this since 2015. We've been working with customers building real uh, RISC-V implementations and adopters RISC-V for their products. And as you can see, we've been kind of doing more and more and more of this work as time has progressed. Obviously, RISC-V is gaining momentum. We're seeing lots more RISC-V being used in practice. And this kind of navigation around this uh, ecosystem is uh, something that we provide. Uh, we work crossing all the levels of the technology stack, right? So uh, we've been working, of course, with core implementations, tooling, uh, but also software, hardware. There's plenty of stuff that people need to do to actually ship RISC-V products. And you have to, like RISC-V actually gives you this ability to vertically integrate amongst all those levels. You finally have control of hardware. You can take uh, you know, this RISC-V core, implement customer instructions, or, or build, uh, we've just seen in the keynote, you, know, you can build customized vector implementations with as many cores as you wish. There's plenty of configurability there to drive your next product. And you can integrate all those levels together to achieve better outcomes. And as a company, we've been trying to work with this ecosystem, with this landscape, in a way that helps us fill in the blanks and connect the dots and, and document things uh, that are there, uh, just so that uh, even though there's repetition, even though there's fragmentation, you can kind of discover the good stuff and connect it together to build real things. And one of the driving factors in our work has been the fact that we've been developing a simulator. This is an open source tool called Renode, uh, which um, kind of makes you think about hardware in a very special way because it makes all hardware virtual. For those of you who work with simulation, you know that it kind of makes your life easier and that you can just use your PC to develop anything you want. And uh, the good thing about uh, uh, working like this, it makes you realize that things are much more similar than you think. And it, makes, it also makes you think how I could make it even more similar. Uh, so we've been using Renode for lots of things, and that includes actually co-development of silicon and uh, pre-silicon prototyping for platforms such as microchips, uh, Polar Fire SOC and so on. Uh, but we've also been using it to test software at scale. Uh, we've discovered that if you look at software, if you look at Zephyr, for example, you will discover patterns. You will see that everything's somehow interconnected, and you can discover the, the way this landscape is structured by just parsing data, by just consuming all this software and trying to see, OK, what can we get out of this? And through the structure of Zephyr embedded in its device trees, We've seen patterns that allowed us to actually create huge interactive dashboards that run hundreds of binaries. Uh, this is the so-called Zephyr dashboard, which we use to test hundreds and hundreds of binaries uh, for Zephyr, for different platforms, ARM, RISC-V, you name it. And then 
We also saw, well, we can do the same for UBoot. UBoot also has device trees. We can do the same. So we started a UBoot dashboard, and we started testing TensorFlow in this way. So we have you know, interactive tests of you know, hundreds of TensorFlow platforms uh, for, for TF Flight Micro. And then uh, recently, actually, uh, Notix reached out to us and said, hey, could we do the same for Notix? And there's no reason why we couldn't do this. This data exists. It's there. And if you take this data and you think about it a bit more, you could think about it in a way that uh, um, what if you know, we could build an encyclopedia of this knowledge? What if we could actually uh, present this data to people in an interesting and appealing way? Uh, so we did this. We built Renotepedia. We uh, kind of announced it some time ago. Uh, and it's an interactive encyclopedia of the results that we took from, from those dashboards. And this encyclopedia allows us to just uh, uh, show people the breadth of the ecosystem and the ability to just seamlessly simulate all these things. And you can see the outcomes. You can see traces. You can see uh, UART uh, uh, outputs and so on. It's all there on that website. But then we were also working on some other things. As I said, our company's working on different levels. And we also have a hardware team that's building hardware, building boards, dozens and dozens of boards. Some of them risk five, some of them not. And when you build hardware uh, over and over and over again, you realize that hardware is all about structure. There's schematics, there's bombs, there's, you know, there's lots of stuff that's basically tabular data that you could process. So what if we took that data and actually did something with it? And that's how what we call the Open Hardware Portal was born. Now, the Open Hardware Portal is a portal that's uh, uh, based on one concept that for all the boards, all the PCBs that we design, we would take all those components and not only just build them for ourselves, but build them into, first of all, KiCad footprints and then also Blender visualization models that would constitute a library that's an open source library that we give to the world and then anyone can contribute back to it. And thanks to this library approach, thanks to this open source approach, uh, we're starting to see, again, more and more patterns, right? There's, uh, the patterns just emerge and they scream at you. And you're thinking, oh, if I want to make it easy to contribute, I, I need to kind of figure out what the patterns are. And we have those uh, very beautiful visualization capability. We have things like an interactive schematics viewer, because, again, we have an open source flow. And the open source flow is based on KiCad, and there's a tool called uh, um, oh, I don't know for now, but uh, there, there's a tool that allows you to actually uh, Kai Canvas, right? Uh, view those schematics online. And we could just integrate that into our portal. And we can visualize stack ups because, again, it's all open source, it's all automated. So we have this growing portfolio, right? We have like dozens of boards where we can generate those photorealistic 3D renders, we can show it to the world, except that it's, it's only so useful, right? Like it's only for the boards that we make. Except that it isn't. So this, what you're looking at here, is an icicle board. That's a microchip board with RISC-V on it. And this is not the board we designed, right? Microchip did it themselves. Uh, but since we have a flow that can visualize stuff, why not just use this flow to, to show this? And so here it is. It's, it's pretty simple to actually build this, even though uh, the board has not been designed by our company. By using the component library, using this flow, we can generate those 3D renders easily. So when looking at all these things, you know, Reno, Renopedia, Open Hardware Portal, we realized, okay, we're actually looking at the same landscape from different perspectives in the company, from the Reno team, from our software team, from our hardware team. What if we actually looked at it more deeply and discovered the commonalities? And from that, uh, a new idea was born, and I wanted to talk about today about uh, what we call the hardware designer. It's a working name. Uh, it's basically taking all this data about how uh, boards and chips and hardware is structured and trying to see what if we could give it to people in a form that allowed them to build this interactively. So what you're seeing right now is an icicle kit, what I just showed, visualized, in the form of a block diagram, except it's not a block diagram that's been drawn with like a generic you know, diagramming tool. This is a dedicated tool for drawing uh, hardware block diagrams. And RISC-V specifically, of course, is interesting because with RISC-V, you can customize everything, right? RISC-V gives you the ability to pick and choose your IP components and, and cores and to customize the core, customize your instructions. All of this variability, all of this configurability 
again, is very awesome, but you also need a way to navigate it. And we're hoping that this becomes a way to navigate that landscape. So here we're showing an open Titan diagram. And of course, we've been working with open Titan a lot and uh, contributing to uh, some of the open source tools that are used there. And uh, generally speaking, uh, it's been a great uh, hallmark project, you know, open source project, providing a lot of great IP into the world. And you can now use this IP and connect it to other things. Uh, so we can basically take those building blocks and create, assemble uh, SOCs out of them. And you can even go to entire boards, right? So you can take um, like this SOC and then connect a sensor to I2C, right? And, and then you have a board that you can work with. Uh, for all those components that we have there, you can uh, look them up in both Renodepedia and Ho Open Hardware Portal. Again, that's the beauty of it. It's all connected, so these portals kind of descri describe the same landscape. And also, what we're working on is being able to generate Renode files. So, uh, you know, Renode being a simulator, uh, it kind of likes structure, because if you know the structure of a piece of hardware, you can also generate the simulation for it. Uh, so yeah, that's our, of course, uh, goal to, to enable this, and we don't see it as a very difficult thing to do. Uh, what's more, and what's perhaps interesting to, to everyone here who's developing chips, uh, since Renode gives you the ability to co-simulate with Verlator so that you can simulate real RTL, both for cores and for peripheral IP, uh, you can basically build those very related uh, uh, parts, which you can then, of course, co-simulate. Like, you can have a core in Verlator and all the other peripherals in Renode or vice versa, you know, whatever you like. Um, we've used this flow, we've used these capabilities to help our customers build and co-develop machine learning. Uh, so machine learning solutions, uh, vector cores, um, cores that have custom instructions, custom extensions. Uh, so this is a very potent tool. And we're right, actually, uh, we've been giving a demo today about this workflow. And if you, if you do this, if you work with Reno to build this kind of solution, you can gather a lot of metrics, you can get a lot of data around the execution of your course and uh, visualize it and uh, analyze it to improve your implementation. Uh, since recently, we can also use Reno to uh, verify a uh, uh, course with RISC-V DV. Uh, we've integrated this as part of the Calyptra project. Uh, so currently, you can also use Reno for verification purposes alongside, of course, a RTL simulator. Uh, one other goal that we're working towards and we're super excited about is uh, generating firmware. So if you have a device tree description of uh, your system, uh, there's nothing stopping you from actually generating your code, right? And that is something that, taken together with the simulation capability that we're getting here, uh, is what we believe is the killer app for, for this. So today, I just wanted to call out to all of you, all of the IP vendors, SOC vendors, sound builders, SBC vendors, sensor companies, component companies, to come and talk to us, because we want to make your stuff available through this uh, designer. We want to uh, have people build their systems in this kind of visual way. Of course, underneath all the plugging is command line driven, so don't worry. We're not going to lock you into some kind of visual system you can't escape. Uh, we're very much a console-driven company. But at the same time, we understand that uh, a lot of the work that you need to do uh, very often needs some helper tools. And that is a helper tool that we're hoping going to be very big. And as we're doing this, as we're building this ecosystem, we're also calling out to all the system builders and the product developer companies to come to talk to us to build their hardware, software, AI frameworks, uh, build and integrate core and non-core IP. You know, we have all these capabilities that we can use and also use them to build out the ecosystem. So whenever we you know, build a Zephyr port for you or, or, or build a PCB for you, we can enhance this tool to make it better for everyone. Yeah, so pre please come talk to us at booth number one. And I hope that uh, I'm going to be able to, throughout this month, show you more and more of this visual designer tool that we're currently unveiling. Thank you very much.